Let's see now. One mer monkey. Check. One spike factory. Check. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. Welcome to the channel. Here on the channel, we like to do crazy and wacky challenges that either Ninja Kiwi has put as an achievement or the community has decided that it's worthwhile doing. Such as two tower chimps, two mega pots, few tower type chimps. Other stuff based on quests that Ninja Kiwi have put within the game. Stuff like that. I may not be the best of it, but I am one of the most determined. So what are we doing on Sulphur Springs? Well, it's on one of the easier sides when it comes to an intermediate map within the game of Balloon's Tower Defense 6. Let's get some Echo Sense position. And while we're here, let's do a two tower chimps involving these two towers. And I'm not doing that well. Microwing involved. I want to stick you on strong, but we're going to need to change you inevitably. Uh, yes, we grabbed that last pink. That was about to escape. No, thank you. We do need the, um, the spike factory down at some point. It's a little known fact. I tried to do this recording already, but I didn't even hit the record button. Aren't I just fantastic? <laughs> uh, every content creator's worst nightmare where the capturing software says start recording rather than stop recording. I'm pretty sure some people know the pain that I am describing right now. Also put you back onto first because of, well, shenanigans and stuff. I need to put you back on first and then put you back on strong, put you back on first. And we're going to summon our spike factory. We're going to put you at the very back of the map here. Just so that some lead uh, spikes will be able to reach over here. We'll be able to pop some leads because lead balloons early game is going to be our weakness, honestly. Before we get Spike Storm. If you enjoy the video and you would like to contribute towards the growth of the channel along with any other means like using my creator support code Flare Balloons whenever you're shopping on the store, I'll be greatly appreciated. But alongside that, if you have not subscribed to the channel, then please do so, because at 10,000 subscribers, which are only 800 away of at the time of this recording, we will be doing a 220 base mortar, two mega pops on the channel. <laughs> uh, I'm not going insane. We're going faster production, so we don't quite need for White Heart Spikes just yet until we reach round uh, 28, but... Um, we do need to think about the amount of piles in which we are producing with our spike factory here. Just because of the sheer fact that sometimes we may even get overwhelmed here. Let's see, you are both capable of popping camo balloons. Round 25, usually it's quite a ominous round if you're a plasma wielding, energy wielding or fire wielding maniac. White Heart Spikes, and we're going to go with Trident Swift, and then soon we're going to go with the Abyss Dweller, which I keep saying Abyssal Dweller, because the next upgrade is Abyssal Warrior. <laughs> uh, I'm so good. Round 27, Yellow Balloons, our worst nightmare, and round 28, Lead Balloons. Yeah, this is going to be our main problem early on, because only very... Would you... Okay, only that last most spike reached at the very end there, so... I kind of want to get Spike Storm as soon as possible, but at the same time, slowing them down with the Abyssal Warrior is also going to be very good when it comes to the number of piles on which we can actually produce. There's not really any strategy, besides just prey or Sulphur Springs to come in clutch with its layout. Ninja Kiwi labels it as an intermediate map, but it's easier than some easy maps, honestly, like the Cabin and the Lotus Island. To name two. We have Abyss Dweller now, which means at some point we're going to get Abyssal Warrior. And honestly, I think getting Abyssal Warrior first will be better than trying to get Mo Shredder. Because A, we don't really benefit from um, Mo Shredder before round 40. And B, we kind of need the slowdown with the inking of balloons. It even inks lead balloons, which I can't normally pop, so that's pretty good. Slows them down, makes the spike factory produce more spikes. Everybody wins. Well, except for balloons, they don't win. I anticipate the tentacles of the top path Mer Monkey will get nerfed at some point. I think they're just a bit too good against ceramics, especially with Lord of the Abyss. So I think you can two-shot a super fortified ceramic, which is honestly nuts. But 
I, I, I like it as it is. Don't nerf it, Ninja Kiwi, but I just anticipate that it will be nerfed. Let's see now. Can I pop all of these? The answer's yes. Okay, next round. Also consisting of lead balloons. No thanks. I'll put you on strong. Hopefully you'll target the zebra balloons. As I sometimes call them zebra balloons. Coat the ceramics. Pop the ceramics. Yeah, if I... Oh my god. No, 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 no. Oh, oh my... No, no. The, uh, as soon as I saw that ceramic go down there, I knew it would just use up a lot of spike piles. Also, what are you doing here? Keep the Abyssal Warrior on strong. Hopefully, it will target the ceramics. Just... Oh, would you target the ceramics? Oh, thank goodness for that. It's all down to RNGesus when it comes to the spike placements. And there's no way in which somebody can tell me in which you can micro these effectively. Round 40, slow down. I, look, this is just my take, but I think the Abyssal Warrior is better than the Lord of the Abyss when it comes to slowing down Moabs and ceramics and all that lot. Like, I think just from... Uh, just looking at the performance, this is better at slowing down Mo class minutes and all that than this is. While this is a better damage dealer, and also tier five rather than tier four, brings tears to my eyes. Not ink though. All right, let's get Spike Storm since we are going to greatly benefit from that ability to be able to cast lead popping potential across the entire battlefield. Again. The placements of where they're going to summon are RNG. But uh, you know they're going to spray somewhere. It's just like thunder and lightning. You know that it's going to strike. But when about and um, when the sound comes, that's RNG in some ways. Depends on how close you are to the thunder itself. With the Popsidon, while past the purples on round 95, the plasma damage type of the ability is a better but beforehand is kind of a mix in between i prefer the shatter damage type when it's a heavy purple round but then also the plasma damage type being a buff so simultaneously a buff and a nerf to it a bit of damage type especially for a two tower chimps but you just need to find a way to be able to pop purple balloons effectively otherwise your um pop Sidon is going to be pop busted also round 50 uh, I'm gonna lay you out because of the lead class sorry lead balloons lead class balloons we've got a new kind of moab here it's called the lead cast balloon which is also called the ddt and you're going down just like that excellent this thing flies against ceramics honestly you know how a set of base mortar two mega pops is really ridiculous well get this somebody very recently has managed to do a super mines two mega pops Super mines. Yes, that incredibly expensive spike factory upgrade. The top tier, tier five spike factory upgrade. Someone's made that possible through regrow farming in chimps. And if people doubt me, there is a video explained by P Smart Person of how regrow farming works in chimps alongside We Are Toasty, who managed to do the run. You seen the super, super mines as the two mega pops in order to actually get it which both demonstrate how you can regrow farm within the game essentially you just need to be able to partially damage regrow balloons before round 80 because then they can split off and then enable the regrow balloons to fully regrow and you'll be able to get more money out of them that way but you still got to take into consideration the pop count at the very end. Round 59, camo lead balloons, which are going to be very annoying, but we do have a treatment for them. And it's called the Spike Factory. And there they go. I kind of wanted that last lead to be a lead so that we have more time with this, but we've got the Lord of the Abyss now. So we should be very good against Moa class, well, Moa balloons and even BFBs as well. But ZMGs. We're definitely going to need some um, support for that one. Round 62. Thankfully, the Lord of the Abyss is the best way out of the Mermonkeys to be able to deal with purple balloons. 
because it's actually been given a buff in update 44 point where one sorry where um rather than having the sharp damage type which could also be a nerf because it can't be used with a uh, sharpening stone um it's now the shatter damage type which is the same as sharp but you can actually pop frozen balloons which is kind of cool and i may have casted the spike storm ability a bit too early on the round but no worries yeah this means weakness is definitely lit balloons and ddts and bad yeah this is just one shot in ceramics at the moment which is pretty insane i'm gonna use you just to speed up the process and there goes round 65 more lead balloons more love to give using the spike factory round 69 is a one of a kind round one tower that would be very good on this map is the pop Sidon because of its ability and if you place a pop Sidon over here or over here or over here the ice balls on the screen will be trapped within this cavern so it means that the ability will most likely have to run out of time or meet its pierce gap rather than just naturally disappearing off the screen. Well, that's what it feels like anyways, because it barely does any damage past the straight barrage against its intended target. Okay, lead balloons again. No, thank you. Spray you all over the track. Hopefully I've got all of the lead balloons there. And we are very good. No more ticking sounds from the Lord of the Abyss. Round 76. Go away. So here's a fun fact. If you give a shatter damage type tower, so not being able to pop lead balloons, a acidic mixture dip, you transform it into a normal damage type because then it has no weaknesses. It's best to have perma brew, but um, let's just say that I'm not really going to try and test Lord of the Abyss with perma brew because of the fact that, well, um, it's not very good against the bigger Mario class balloons, let's just say that. And DDTs, it really struggles against as well, even when being able to damage them. And the other ceramics, it just crushes. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit too good against the round 78 ceramics, for goodness sakes. Uh, but I love this tower, honestly. I like all three cross paths, honestly. Pop Sidon is the most powerful. You can utilize the uh, final harmonic the most, especially with a fan. Let me just say this right now. A new world record on a custom map of the highest round can be beaten now because of the fact that the final harmonic can reduce the cooldown time of the ZDZ Moab Hex ability. And if you can produce more of those, then that's brilliant. Okay, I'm going to use a spike storm just so that I can pop you a bit easier. And there they go. We just need a few hundred more. There will be a permanent means and I'll be able to spray the entire track with spikes. And there we go. We shouldn't have any troubles now. I would say round 98 is going to be the only hurdle left. I would say if I wanted to i would like the carbon spikes to be next to the lord of the abyss just so that the lord of the abyss can actually get this being a pierce buff but it's not going to logically work because a you can't really place a spike factory along here i think possibly over here you could possibly could but b um it's not in a viable spot especially for the early lead rounds when you're in a balloons tower defense 6 emo competition and your final opponent is lord of the abyss do you stand a chance well, not really, because you wouldn't even place third, because there's two other contestants as well. Round 85. There you go. And, uh, I don't know, Prince of Darkness is also pretty gothic as well. And round 85, done and dusted. That just goes to show how potent this spin is against Mel class balloons. It was even better. The Ninja Kiwi decided to nerf the amount of time that these spikes have on the field. And also increase the price of carpet spikes as well. Ninja Kiwi just really loves to nerf things that doesn't need to be nerfed. This is not complaining, this is criticism. There's a difference between the two. Round 87, done and dusted. Also in update 44, the um the attack speed of the second upgrade has been nerfed from 30% increase to 25% increase. I know it's not a huge amount, but it can still can make the difference. Round 92, super fortified ceramics, no chance. 
we have quite literally one of the best means of taking you all down although i would say that spirit of the forest is still up there as being a better super ceramic counter because it's map wide round 93 i didn't show round 90 because it just looked like that but a bit more instantaneous when it comes to the dt's death honestly wasn't worth it and there they go round 94 a very big round the very first round i would say is oh crap that is a lot of balloons to deal with but again we have our tools needed to defeat them also emo mermonctus <laughs> i couldn't think of a better name for it at the time Round 95, we are having a combination of purple balloons and lead balloons, which means this means it's not always reliable at popping the purple balloons because there are lead balloons in the way and DDTs. Not really what you would call DDTs, are they? They're more like DDADs, if you get what I mean. I'm trying to say they're dead. Round 96, the second biggest round in a normal chimps game. Round 98 is the biggest, by the way. If you're new to Balloons Tower Defense 6 late game sort of shenanigans, Round 98 has the most amount of RBE in the entire run. RBE meaning Red Balloons Equivalent. Which means, how many Red Balloons can you fit inside a certain balloon? Round 97, Fortified CMGs. Let's just let the carpet spike in this deal with them all. Okay, no, um, there's not going to be a one mega pops each with this scenario. Obviously, this means it's too far to the front and the carpet spike spawn too late. Round 97, done and dusted. Round 98, the big round. The very big round in which I know, which we might take some tries here in order to perfect the timing of the spike storm ability. But I think it's just a matter of trying to get two spike storm abilities out. Hopefully, can we do it? Come on now, I know you can do it. There we go, use the ability and that, and actually that went first try. I just need, yeah, that's why, exactly why I needed just a leg with pose. Yay, round 100, just the bad left. Thank you ever so much, everyone, for watching the video, and the, uh, the bad did not make it out of the circle before it was swapped. That is the power of the carbon spikes. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who has clicked the like button, commented down below, and subscribed to the channel. Either you've already done so, or you've done so throughout the video. Wait, why haven't you done so already? You know what? That's fine as well. It's your decision. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been quite a sim. I would say that the hardest parts of the game are setting up and also the mid game as well, pre Spike Storm. Especially on this map, honestly. Thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.